Welcome back. All you fabricants and flashbacks to the super, not funny show, Supercast. The Supercast, where we talk about all things superhero in the pop culture space, and that's movies, TV shows, video games, a little speculation and news, all that good stuff. And of course, I am Mo De Pupé, your resident fabricant and comic extraordinaire on all things pop culture, joined by the video game designer, anime expert, and lover of all things superhero, my good friend Lottie. Lottie, how you doing today, man? I'm doing great, man. Ready to talk about some of this uh, Marvel news and DC news as well. Also talk about this uh, Marvel movie tier list. And also, you DC fans, don't get too mad. Just not enough movies are out for us to make an actual tier list yet. <laughs> we, I mean, we. I suppose we could, but it's probably wouldn't take that much time to do it. But you know, no. <laughs> so that's that's right. Uh, this this week, it's the obligatory. Marvel tier list. Uh, everyone loves tier lists nowadays, so we thought we'd get in on the fun uh, to show y'all our our. Uh, I guess the we're ranking the movies uh, in in to five different tiers. Uh, I don't even want to know if it's good to bad. It's just uh, the order of importance and interest. So we're gonna do that as our main topic. But before that, as always, we do like to jump into the news for the week. Um, where we talk about the new uh, speculation and new developments going on when it comes to superheroes. So this week, uh, <laughs> we've got some some interesting uh, things abound. There's a new, a new workers' union over at Image Comics. That's, that's a first. I just want to say, that's a first for the industry. There was a Morbius trailer that was teased and finally dropped. Uh, we're going to take a look at that and review that trailer. Hawkeye has a new 30-second TV spot to give us a little more insight into what we can expect later this month. Could Jim Carrey be joining the MCU as a certain big-headed villain? Is that a tentacle monster that uh, <laughs> that uh, Doctor Strange is, is facing? Uh, and what could that mean for the multiverse of madness? More rumors about uh, a possible Blade appearance in the mcu before his own movie uh all those things we're gonna uh <laughs> we're gonna uh spend some time talking about before our main topic so lottie you ready you ready to uh hmm. <laughs> you ready to get into this news yep so um hey everyone i love uh, a good workers union era you know I, a lot of you uh expressed uh, support for unions in the past and i i think i i thought before like there's no way there's ever going to be a union in the comics industry it's just not it's not going to work there's there's not enough unity amongst the the workers and also there's all this power in the hands of the of the publishers but you know what put one down for once in the wrong column for me because over at image comics the uh, comic book creators have come together to form a labor union and as far as I can tell, the, the people at Image are uh, pretty okay with this. So, uh, Lottie, you know, we've been talking a lot about, like, creators' rights and all this other stuff and how, how you treat everyone. Um, are you surprised? Like, are you surprised at all uh, that this happened? And, you know, will this have any major effect on the industry? Or is it just, just an Image thing? First thing I have to say is fight the power. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. And this is something that I think this should be all over the industry, in my opinion, because there has to be there has to be a breaking point because it's getting to the point that these these comic book um, these uh, people like Disney. Warner Brothers and all this stuff. It's gotten to the point that it's like, I don't even care anymore what you have to say about, oh, it's our, it's our rules that, oh, we've been legally binding. We get this, so we should be able to do anything we want. At this point, guys, I, I don't care. You're making millions of dollars off of somebody of somebody's idea. I mean, I mean, well, billions of dollars. 
Come on, man. Just just break them off. Just give them a nice check, man. And because, see, the thing about it is there has to be a stopping point because a lot of people, what they don't understand is that when one industry starts doing this, this could leak into other industries. Right. It can. And some people, you know, no, you know, comic book writers are some of the most disrespected slash, you know, not really known people because people don't care who made the story. They just like to see the story in in motion. You know what I mean? Nobody knows the person who wrote Lord of the Rings. No one knows his name. We I know him, you know. But most people, they just they just want to see it. They don't care if the family's not getting paid for it. They just want to see another Lord of the Rings movie. But that's not how it should be. It's not how it should be. It should be where constantly the family or the people who are still alive, if they're still alive creating, it should still get some form of compensation. I'm not saying give them 10% or 20% or anything like this. But come on, man. You're making billions of dollars off of... Um, uh, let's say, like, great example, Superman. You're making billions of dollars off of Superman. You can't write that. You can't write that family a ten million dollar check. I mean, come on, man. Right. Yeah. This, I, you know, this is, from what I can tell, this is not just about like the comic creators, but just like people who are working in the industry in general. So there's, you know, the people that don't get a lot of, you know, a lot of huge compensation. But definitely do a lot of work on it, you know, letterers and the like. There's and also there's people that actually work within the publishing, you know, the publishing houses themselves, uh, you know, administration and uh, other kind of physical, uh, you know, uh, output of the books. So this is kind of an effort by them to, you know, organize and and try to work on having uh, better conditions. I can tell you this would only work at as as of now, as far as I can tell, this would only work at Image because you know Image is a little more of a it's a creator owned place. They're a lot more mm-hmm. uh, friendly towards uh, I guess creator ownership and that sort of thing. And so I can see why this worked over there. Would it work at Marvel or DC? You know, Marvel and DC even they've gotten better, but they still they still sort of you know live and die on you know, sort of exploiting, let's, let's just call it like that, sort of exploiting the creators and, and the staffers over there. And I don't know that I believe that it would, it would leak into, uh, to Disney or, you know, or to Warner or, or I guess eventually Discovery since they're going to be owning DC. But there's also the truth is that Disney and, Discovery and and Warner Brothers, they already have to deal with la- with labor unions when it comes to the filming side, so mm-hmm. maybe they wouldn't be as hostile toward it as possible. But you know, the other side of it is is that comic books don't really make much money in the in the grand scheme of things. Their value is in IP, so you really have to wonder how how far this can go. But I am all you know, I'm all for it. I'm. I'm all for it simply because anytime uh, an industry uh, and the workers in an industry, you know, kind of decide that they are better off working collectively to get better, you know, better working conditions, better compensation, et cetera, then I'm all for them doing it um, yep. and, and trying to make the, the industry more equitable and um, for everyone, like everyone, you know, they don't have to be exploited. They can actually be partners, and that would be nice if that were true. So, uh, good job, Image Comics workers, and uh, Image, you know, do the right thing and don't, you know, don't start looking like a big horrible corporation. You know, this everyone can win if if everyone just kind of works together here. So, we'll keep an eye on that, and we'll let you know what you uh, what's going on and what we think about it. Uh, trailers, trailers are, uh, this week were, there's not as big as last week, but we did have the much anticipated Morbius trailer. I don't know if you saw this earlier in the week, Lottie, but there, or, or late last week, there's all these Spider-Man, no, you know, fans that were like, uh, 
we want we want our new trailer. We want a new trailer for Spider Man No Way Home because it's only you know two months from now, and they're making a big mess about it. And then it got leaked that the Morbius trailer was going to be coming out, so there was a big uh, anticipation of that on Tuesday. And then finally, finally, uh, they released that that little teaser on Monday uh, evening, and then Tuesday we got to see it. Um, and let me just say, it looks like you know Sony. They are, they came to play. The Sony, they came to play for real. They're not. They're they are all in on the spider, uh, the Spider Verse, if you will. And Morbius looks to be a big part of it, and and they're tying everything together. I I would say they learned their lesson from well from uh, not only the MCU but all for, also from the DCEU about what to do and what not to do, and how to build up a you know an a universe, if you will. And mm-hmm. so, um, but I, I saw that you saw it. What's, what did you think about the trailer? What do you think that this, you know, means for the Sony Spider Verse and the MCU? And also, just like how high is your anticipation for Morbius now? So let me tell you. Let me tell you about the '90s Spider Man was one of my favorite shows growing up, and in the show. The character Morbius was a big part of that show and a big part of my love for the show. I love to see... One of my favorite things about Marvel is the fact that they, not just you know, just Disney, but also Sony, they're not just using the, the main characters to make movies. They're using side characters. And Morbius is one of those things where it's like I tell people this all the time that... In both Marvel and DC, there is a dark story in those in those series. You know, a lot of people do not cannot believe that uh, Blade is part of Marvel. They're like, "What? Blade is a, really a Marvel character?" I'm like, "Yeah, he's part of Marvel." You know what I mean? It's like the same thing where we have a character like Solomon Grundy in uh, DC. That there is a whole like horror act- aspect in Marvel and. I want them to start going into this. Not not everything has to be big ships shooting laser beams and infinity stones. You know what I mean? There's there's a part of Marvel where there's people getting bit by vampires. There's part of Marvel with Lovecraftian horror in it. You know what I mean? There's part of Marvel with straight up old fashioned horror. And I'm happy to see it. I am excited for it. I watched the trailer to see how they're showing him like he went from being this decrepit man go like basically go like, oh, I'm my deathbed to being fully healthy to, oh, my God, I look like I look like the man bat. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. <laughs> it, it's interesting. I want to see how far they're going to push that PG-13 rating. Oh, they're going to push that PG-13 rating to its fullest. But who knows? They might have. Nah, it's, it's going to be PG-13, right? Oh, absolutely. Okay. You, you can count on it. I wonder about what if what is Blade going to be though? Can Blade be PG thirteen? I don't look, think so. Look, look, look! I'm I'm telling you, Sony they've learned all of the lessons. Like you can see, you if you you can see in the last two movies that they put out that they have learned all of the lessons that they that they need. Or well, maybe not that they need, but they've learned all of the lessons that have been learned over time by Marvel Studios and by. DC films and mm-hmm. that because and you can see it on display here how do you connect your your various uh properties in a way that's interesting to the people so that you reward the you reward the fans of their your know, your films they did that yeah. with Venom with with that that bit con- tying it to the MCU right to uh, Tom Holland and they did it here also we saw that Morbius he mentions Venom, like in a little humorous mm-hmm. right? but he mentions Venom. So we know, and there's parts in, in, in the trailer where they mention, you know, what that Venom exists in, in this universe. And we also see, like, very cleverly, like, uh, you, again, you can see the influence of the MCU here. They very cleverly link in, you know, the MCU, you know, Tom Holland Spider-Man, but also... The Andrew Garfield and the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. 
they have these little mm-hmm. things that make you wonder where is this taking place what which universe is this right definitely spider-man is a thing there where is it right mm-hmm. and so they leave it wide open for morbius to be in venom or to venom to be in morbius but also if morbius and venom are in the same place and Venom actually makes it to the MCU to cross over with Tom Holland, uh, Spider-Man, and therefore Morbius can do so also. This is like, you know, they're they're very deliberately doing things here, and I'm there for it. I am there for this. This trailer was awesome. As far as I'm concerned, it was awesome. It yep. it made it it made um, Morbius for real like i don't mean for real as in like oh it's a real movie no i mean for real as in like an actual serious presence as a as a character as a superpower character he's got all the awesome dracula powers right he's being portrayed by jared leto who is a legit for real great actor right yep and they you know we haven't really seen who he's facing or whatever like that but there you know Tying into the whole Spider-Man thing, uh, you know, I'm assuming some bad guys are going to force his hand and like, he, you know, he's flying, he's turned, there's bats and shit like that. There is a straight up homage to uh, to Batman in there with the, with the whole bat scene, right? There, mm-hmm. I mean, this just, this looks, this looks amazing, to be honest. It looks really, really awesome. And it's coming out within a few months. So like, we don't even have that long to wait. And with the way Venom had its little teaser, you know, as far as the MCU thing, you have to wonder, like, who all is going to, you know, what is a Spider-Man going to show up in this? Is Venom going to show up in this? What does it actually mean for the Sony Spider-Verse? And, oh, by the way, there's going to be a Sony Spider-Verse because they've got access to so many other uh, Spider-Man characters. Like, did you see, did you see, like, the little thing about, the Daily Bugle that thing talking about Black Cat and Rhino, like just in those little. Did you see those little yeah. uh, things? So is Black Cat and Rhino going to show? So could we be getting a Black Cat, you know, kind of spinoff or something? I don't know. We don't know, but uh, it's it's intriguing. It's tantalizing, and uh, dang it, over at Sony, they've boy they've they've sat at the feet of of Kevin Feige for a while, and they've they've learned their lessons. They they know how to get. Uh, somebody like me on board. The question is, will they get regular people on board? And I have to say, people love Venom, so I think the answer is probably yes. So I, I don't know. I'm, I'm fucking. I'm on. I'm on board with this. I'm ready to go. So, <laughs> damn y'all for from getting me so excited. It's November and this shit ain't coming out to the end of January. <laughs> <laughs> good, good job, Sony. Uh, we're we are hotly anticipating this. And um, hopefully this also means that the No Way Home uh, trailer is going to be coming out pretty soon. We'll keep an eye on that. Uh, and hopefully, and I'm pretty sure uh, the next, uh, you know, six, eight weeks, we're going to get another Morbius, the, probably the final Morbius trailer. And we'll talk about it when it comes out. Uh, speaking of trailers, there's a quick, really quick TV spot. Like, you know, did you, you know, Lottie, I don't know if you were aware of this, uh, but there are people who still get like broadcast and cable TV and they show commercials to them like that you can't skip. So this is one of those uh, commercials uh, that, you know, I happened to see come up uh, across my feed. So I checked it out and I know you checked it out. And this it's more it's basically at 30 seconds of some stuff we've seen from Hawkeye, some stuff we haven't seen. Uh, we get to see more of Kate Bishop and. And her mom, and then you know what? Maybe a little uh, talk about what what this show is going to really be about. So uh, I don't know. Does you know you watch this? What did you what do you think? And what what does this tell you about this show? And uh, if possible, does it make you does it make you want to watch the show more? So first uh, first thing I want to say about this show is that it is super hyperbole. Because the first line, one of the first lines in the sh- in the trailer is like, "So you guys are about to fight an Avenger level threat. Stop it! He's not an Avenger level threat. It is a threat. But let's be honest, 
the first Avengers movie, the, the threat was an alien race coming to enslave all the humans. I, I doubt Hawkeye is about to fight an alien race by himself. But, you know, just to hype up the show, okay. <laughs> I think so, you know actually you're you're talking about the line where she says are you this is an Avengers level threat and I I think I love the idea of regular people being like oh you're with the Avengers oh are y'all saving the world again like that's that's the way that's the world that the MCU has become that regular people meet a, if they get the chance to meet an Avenger they're like you're saving the world right and they and Clint's just like I'm really not. I'm just. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, not really not doing that. <laughs> yeah, we're just stopping a little. You know, this 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 drug cartel or gang people. You know, yeah. This is not this is not trying to stop an alien guy from wiping out half the universe. Right. You know. <laughs> I wonder if this may not be like a a reference to sort of be like, hey, uh, we're dialing it back some. Every time you see an Avenger. You know, um, when you see when you spot Hawkeye at down at Whole Foods, he's just there to get groceries. There's no Thanos isn't on the next aisle ready to snap everything out of here. Like, it's, yeah, it's OK. We can show up in regular stuff. It's not, you don't have to expect us to to be, you no know, be fighting off alien invasions every time. So, and, you know, and to be honest with you, man, I, we've talked about this before. I think Avengers need. Marvel needs to start doing this, start scaling back some of their characters to where they have more grounded movies and TV shows and leave the intergalactic slash universal stuff to characters like or interdimensional stuff to like Spider-Man, Ant-Man, Doctor Strange and a couple others. Let Captain America beat up some 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 Russians or some other people, whoever he has to beat up, let him do that and not worry about fighting this intergalactic space octopus who we might think that's going to show up. Um, hint, hint. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think we should. I, I like to see, I like to see stuff like this, like Hawkeye, that, okay, I clearly Kevin Feige is saying, we can't have every single Avenger fighting all this universal stuff. Let's start scaling it back to where we have these movies for this and we have movies and TV shows for this, for this part of the MCU. And then we have this movies and TV shows for this part of the MCU. You know what I mean? Right. And I like it. Yeah. No, I, I think my favorite thing about the, the trailer is I, I really dug, like the last time we were talking about the, the, the trailer the the big trailer uh from like a week ago is that you're you're just like i love the the kind of the vibe of this kind of the the holiday action movie home alone ish mm -hmm. you know i get that and like and we see some more of that like kind of the the back and forth between hawkeye and and uh kate bishop and it's it's such a fun little vibe like you're, you're right this is not this can be a, a fun series that doesn't have to involve the, the ending of the world. It doesn't even have to like, you know, involve, you know, major possible death of the characters. It can just be them being superheroes, you know, kind of kicking ass and, and being competent. And also there's a, you know, a passing of the baton. I, I really like that aspect of it. Cause I don't, I, you know, we're going to get a lot of heavy MCU stuff with the Eternals and, and with, uh, you know, with no way home looks like it, it could be wacky, but also very, uh, serious. So this will be a nice little thing to have between, you know, two serious movies. Yeah. And I've, it does my, I am more excited to see this, but I've been pretty high on it already. So it doesn't move my needle that much, but Hey, you know, every little bit counts and, uh, it's looking good. So we're, we're actually up on that in a few weeks, like when, uh, the day before Thanksgiving. So, that will be a great, great way to uh, go into the, the Thanksgiving weekend. And, of course, we're going to talk about that when it drops. So uh, we'll check that out when that happens. Um, moving on to the next bit of uh, kind of rumors and speculation. There's a lot of, like, quick hit rumors and speculation, but I thought this was all, like, some some interesting stuff. It's all, again, all, because it's the Marvel Showcast, it's all, all to do with Marvel, but... Uh, we know the Moon Knight show is 
is being filmed as we speak. But there's a rumor that Mahershala Ali could show up as Blade in the show. Because, you know, again, Moon Knight is, he's like Batman, but there's some supernatural shit going on with him, too. Uh, and he definitely, in, in the comic, when you first see Moon Knight's fights werewolf by night. So there's supernatural aspects to the Moon Knight character. And this, you know, this rumor is that, he, you know, Blade's going to show up. The first appearance of Blade won't be his own show or movie or whatever. It will be actually in this show. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I don't know. First of all, yes, if that's tr- if that's true, that's badass. Uh, but second of all, you know, are the is is Disney really ready to go this hard into the horror and supernatural aspects of the of the Marvel universe? I don't know, yeah. Lottie. Which, what do you, do you think that they are that they're ready to double down on that? I think they are. I love to see, like, honestly, I want to see more of. I like I said earlier, I want to see more of this horror aspect, and I hope that they start doing more of it. You know what I mean? And it's just like I am down with. The uh the whole thing of like the Lovecraftian horror and like the same thing with like what's going on with them possibly uh just I don't like I'm I am a how could I say what's the word I could say? I am a sucker for horror. And I don't mean like jump scare horror, like horror movie horror. I like the dark atmospheres of what horror can bring to you. And I will love for them to start adding more of this to movies and just everything. Cause like I said, there's just, there's more to Marvel, Marvel and DC to just aliens and people flying around shooting laser beams. You know what I mean? There's more to it. And I, and I'm down to see more of it. Right. And there's, I mean, there are aspects of, like I said, of, of, uh, Moon Knight where there's definitely some, you know, ancient Egyptian gods and and all that concerned there, and of course, you know, blades blades a half vampire, and vampires have definitely been hinted at in the MCU. So now we're going to get to see more of that. Also, Blade is one of the the better hand to hand fighters, and he you know he fights with sword, and so is Moon Knight. You know, could they have like the superhero meeting where they they fight each other and then they team up? Mm-hmm. You know, could could vampires be sort of, you know, surrounding what's going on with Moon Knight? There's definitely precedent mm-hmm. for that in the comics. And just in general, because they are, you know, what I keep saying about the MCU, the people that are running the MCU, they are the smoothest criminals in the game right now. By far. Nothing's ever accidental. There's no, when things happen, you, you can, you know, you can bet your ass they've been in the works for four or five years. And so, if Blade shows up in Moon Knight, you know that this is something that they've been planning to, to get ready for his, you know, his entrance. And also, you know, the, the horror aspects of this. And let's not forget, Multiverse of Madness is coming up. And there's definitely, you know, there's definitely a lots of horror elements to Doctor Strange and, and, the, and magic. So we have, all, you know, we have all of this. Uh, to to think about, so I don't think it's a stretch at all that you know that Blade would show up, and it, it really could just be you know he suits up, shows up for some scenes, and then we don't, and they're like, oh well, did you like Blade? Well, you know his his movie's coming out in a couple of years, so you know just keep keep it keep an eye out. So they're they're smart. They're not they're not just doing things on accident. Um, so we'll you know we'll keep an eye on that, and we'll let you guys know what. If anything, we hear about this uh, in the future. Uh, more speculation. Everyone loves Jim Carrey. If you don't like, what are you doing with your life? Because I mean, his most recently, he was a scene stealer in in, in the uh, Sonic the mm-hmm. Hedgehog movie. He was a perfect Doctor Robotnik. Uh, fight, yeah. me, fight me on that. I think he was perfect. Um, yeah. That that said. You know, everyone wants to be in the MCU nowadays, or you know, every, they're always trying to get new people or establish people in the MCU. So the rumor is, 
is that Jim Carrey could show up in the MCU, and you'll never guess who he's going to be. I think I've already sort of handed at it. Uh, a certain, yep. a certain large domed uh, bad guy who <laughs> who has a who has a chair and also shoots mind blasts. Uh, a lot of you know <laughs> you know him as the mental organism designed only for killing, aka Modok. And yep. <laughs> um, he's we I mean, he most recently had a, a little animated show on Hulu, but. I think Jim Carrey, what a genius idea. <laughs> what a genius idea for for to Modoc, you know, to be if if this is true, I cannot see I cannot see a better person to be Modoc. Um but I don't know. You what's your what's your take on this? If if this is true, what do you, what do you think this this uh means for the MCU? Uh, so is Modoc going to be a pet detective? <laughs> is, he, is 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 it's is gonna, Modoc, it's gonna is be Modoc really going to have a mask on? Yeah, it's what's well, going to be really weird if he does the whole little talking with the butt thing because he is stuck yes. to that chair. <laughs> <laughs> but I just you know it's it's just why not? Like yes, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> No, I'm saying yes. I could just completely agree. Like, I I love Jim Carrey. I am down with everything of Jim Carrey. I oh my God. I would love to see more of him to see what where we can go with this character. You know what I mean? Yeah, man, I love it. Yeah, it's just like it's so weird. Like, this is where we are with the MCU. Like think mm-hmm. think about phase one through three, and it's pretty straightforward. Like for real, it's even the it, the goofiness, the goofiest thing in the MCU up up through and you know end game was basically the Guardians of the Galaxy. They're they're mm-hmm. about the goofiest thing that you that that and Thor Ragnarok, but they're you know they're because they're all out and you know they're doing cosmic things, you know, and there's weirdness out there. But we haven't really seen the goofy shit that goes on on Earth, and Modok is definitely one of those things. You know, he's, yeah. he's almost literally a giant head with like a tiny body, and he's all you know. He's a super brain. He's one of the smartest people on Earth. Um, mm-hmm. Just like I said, a goofy ass looking. You know, Kirby. You know, Jack Kirby drew this big old head with arms and like a floating chair. But he's a legit, like a legit threat to the the Avengers and to you know to the Fantastic Four and so forth. But that's where we are at the MCU. They have gotten to the point where vampires and werewolves are on deck, and so is a a giant floating head that shoots blasts with out of a fucking gem in his forehead, and and runs aim. Like that's what I'm saying. We we've gotten to the point where they are deep cutting, and yep. I'm damn it, I'm there for that. Like I I want everyone. You know what? I cannot wait for the day where you know an average person, just like an average person I know that's never read comics, knows who the hell Modok is, and not just knows who the hell Modok is. They've seen the movie, the the several movies where he's the bad guy. Uh, and they they know when they, and they can look at they can seriously look at this guy in a fucking floating chair w- with a gigantic head, know it's Jim Carrey and take him seriously. That's when that happens. I'm just gonna be like, you know what? We've won. We, we got everyone. Mm-hmm. We've won. We can we can go home now. We're now we're just running the score up. And that's this is Marvel flexing. Am I wrong? This Mar- that Marvel's flexing right now. Yeah, because DC can't even get. Like I, I'm not trying to shit on DC because you know I love DC comics, but God dang it, they've got some goofy ass shit too. They can't even get to their goofy shit because they're still trying to get their regular serious stuff working. But Marvel's just over there flexing, like just doing whatever. They're throwing everything at the and everyone eating it up. So <laughs> and this is and this is one of the things that I just I'm scared of for uh, for DC because. I hope DC doesn't try to 
start jumping the gun again to where they started messing up their schedules and stuff. Just just stay in the paint, focus on what you have going on, and continue to make movies because let's just be honest, they're nowhere near what they're supposed to because we there's that that supposed uh that uh remember that um that list they came out with like five or six years ago uh-huh. it's 2021 and i still haven't seen a cyborg movie yet oh that cyborg <laughs> movie is dead you can you can yeah. count on that we are getting flash though and we are we're getting aquaman too so like they are doing some of the goofy shit but they're they're not really getting to like they like at the if they were in the same place now that the MCU is, they would have Superman fighting Mister Ms. Pit Ms. Pitlick, whatever that guy. You know what I'm talking about? He they he'd be fighting that guy. You know there'd uh-huh. be the Reverse Flash running around. They'd have Booster Gold, uh, going you know running around doing time travel stuff. Now all the all that goofy ass shit that that's in the comics, we'd be seeing that by now, and DC's got plenty of it. Um, but they're not, they're not quite there yet. They're still, they're still in the phase. If they were in the phases, they'd still be in phase two right now. So Mm -hmm. that said, big flex there, (laughs) Marvel, and I'm there for it. I can't wait. Uh, if it's true, uh, moving on, uh, speaking of goofy ass shit, but actually I guess it's not so much goofy, but it is like very weird. And you're talking about Lovecraftian things. Uh, a villain that I know you're well acquainted with within the MCU or the Marvel comics is Shuma Gorath. And yes. uh, there was a bit of a, uh, I guess, merchandise box art that was leaked this week uh, for pre- because of pre-orders for it. And it showed Doctor Strange facing off against a tentacled monster with a big eye. Uh, and everyone, everyone spotted like that's Shuma Gorath. So is he going to be in Multiverse of Madness? That, I mean, it's this is a p- bit of merchandise for Multiverse of Madness, and we have seen something that may be Shuma Gorath in Marvel's What uh, What If when Sorcerer when uh, Strange Supreme, uh, I guess absorbed some of Shuma, or probably absorbed all of Shuma Gorath. On his quest for power to, you know, prevent some, you know, prevent the death of, uh, of his uh, girlfriend. Mm-hmm. So that I think they've laid the path. It seems like they've laid the path for this. And of course, this box art really pretty much, you know, seal seals the deal that something's going on there. As uh, you know, someone who I know you're, you're well aware of and you're a fan of of this character. Now that you've seen this. It just like do you th- first of all do you really think we are going to see Shuma Gorath in uh, Doctor Strange multiver in the Multiverse of Madness? And if we, if we are, is he the big bad? And how screwed is <laughs> how screwed is Doctor Strange and uh, the, the team there? Please, God, yes, I want to see Shuma Gorath. Please, 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 I want to see Shuma Gorath. And if he's in it, oh man. Ugh. Doctor Strange, he ain't he ain't he's not the strange that we know from what if he, he mm. Shuma Giraffe ain't no man to joke with man he's not he makes Dormammu look like a like a he makes Dormammu look like a like a wee little baby <laughs> <laughs> Shuma Giraffe is literally the Marvel version of Cthulhu you know this is. This is one of those, this is one of the like end all villains type thing. You know what I mean? This guy reigns in the chaos dimension. Really, I, how can I explain Schumer Graf? Schumer Graf is so powerful and so like powerful that he doesn't really care to take over stuff. But people for some reason like mess with him, which causes him to start fucking with shit. You know what I mean? He doesn't. He's not like uh, Dormammu. Who's like, I want to take over the living world. Shuma Graf is like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's right. that powerful that he that like, he's so powerful. He sees all realm as insig. It's not even worth his time to take over. You know what I mean? Right. 
Yeah, and, yeah, he's like you say, a Lovecraftian. That's kind of like they call them the ancient old ones, where <clears throat> they don't even notice you. And then if you, for some stupid reason, you make them notice you, you are like you're screwed. You're so screwed. Yeah. You don't even you you don't understand how screwed you are, because it's kind of like you know. Uh, you ever, if you're just kind of like, you know, walking around and then you feel something sort of crawling on the back of your neck and you just pop it and you just keep moving, keep it moving. Right. <laughs> it's like that. They're like, oh, something's bothering me. Bam. And that, and that's the end of them. And yeah, that's where Dr. Strange is. So if this is true, like good, good God, they are. Ooh. And also, and actually, I, and I actually wanted to provide a little bit more context to Shuma Garath because they, they also showed a little more. Um, I guess you say merchandise pictures where they had um, the t- the quote team where it was it would be um, Doctor Strange, Wong, Scarlet Witch, and and a new character, a new character that uh, that has you know showed up in the comics in the last ten years and is very powerful and she's a dimensional she's a dimensional uh, hopping person and her name is america chavez and i don't don't know how we're uh, well aware of you of her you are but Mm -hmm. i've i've seen them uh speculate that she may be pursued across dimensions by shuma garath so do you know how bad first of all you know how much shit you have to stir up in order to get shuma garath to even notice that you exist who is like so she could be the reason why they have to face off against uh, this, you know, cosmic entity. So there's, you know, now now you know that, and she, you know, why would he want her? That's like these are all these big questions. Like, why would he want her, and why would she land in the MCU, and how would Doctor Strange, you know, how would they run run across each other? It's, I mean, I'm I'm curious. See, my first thing I would say to her is. Woman, how in the hell did you piss off Shuma Garaf? And why are you bringing him to my damn doorstep? <laughs> like, what what is wrong with you? If you want to, get, you can deal with it yourself. I'm not helping you. That's what well, I was that's, saying. That's, mm. Well, do you remember, um, again, this is from the comics, so I don't know how much this they're going to lean into. But you remember uh, in, uh, in Crisis on Infinite Earths uh, in mm-hmm. D.C., Superboy Prime is like he, he's strong enough to actually physically break uh break through to a different dimension. And I think that America Chavez is like that. She's got she's she's got the power to actually cross dimensions on her own. Which uh, it, you know, as you know in the MCU basically the last time uh, in the MCU the last thing we person we saw that crossed dimensions that wasn't the Watcher was Infinity Stone powered Ultron, right? So mm-hmm. that if that gives you an idea about what kind of power this this you know this young lady's working with. So Schumer, that's certain. I think that that is certainly enough to sort of you know maybe be a distraction or some kind of like you know some something that can be noticed by an ancient one. So that's. It's all intro again. This is all speculation, but uh, you know, I'm. I feel like we're we're going in the right direction, um, and so that's and that's all coming out in next March. So we're we're coming up on you know we're about five months out from that. So I I suspect we'll be getting a a trailer from that probably around the time. Actually, I would not be surprised if we get our first look trailer around the time that No Way Home comes out. So. Mm-hmm. We'll keep an eye on that and let you guys know uh, what comes up. Uh, but that's all the news uh, for this week. A uh, lot, a lot more speculation than news, really. But um, if we, you know, we could, we couldn't cover everything. But if there's something that we didn't cover and you thought we should talk about, just hit us up in the comments, or of course you can always hit us up on Twitter at supernotfunnys one or. Uh, super not funny show at gmail.com and uh, you know we can chop it up talk about uh, these news items and maybe we'll talk about uh, what you mentioned all right so uh, moving on to our main topic for this uh, week 
that's a little nerd, a nerd talk, a little nerd discussion and debate, uh, which we like to do uh, from time to time, especially on a slow news week uh, like this week. And so everyone's all into the whole, what do you call it, the the tier maker uh, where, you, you know, you take a bunch of things and you, you list them, you know, in order, uh, I guess, of you rank them, uh, uh, you know, according to how good or bad or whatever you think they are. So um, this is popular, like, with fighting games and, and all that. But we're also we're doing one for, you know, you know for movies and TV shows. So uh, the MCU, of course, uh, you know, like 22 episodes, uh, not 22 episodes, but 22 <laughs> movies, uh, average a $1 billion grossing. Uh, they're um, okay. a big, cohesive, you know, story told, you know, over the course of all those movies. Uh, there's lots of payoffs and setups and all this other stuff between them. And of course they all, uh, you know, lead up to this one big crossover event. Uh, something that, you know, nerds, you know, comic nerds all over really love to see, which is, you know, uh, characters from different properties sort of teaming up and having to fight one big, uh, threat. It all came together with uh, Avengers Endgame. Um, so, I think we, you know, we'll have a little fun here and and figure out, you know, what's what's an S tier movie and what's a D tier movie. D, of course, being the worst and S being the top. And um, so I don't know, Lottie, you want to you want to go from uh, <coughs> alphabetically. You want to just start from the the first well, thing on the list, or you want to go from what you think's the worst and what you think's the best. Well, just, just let's just let's let's just get this one out the way. The original Avengers movie just put it at S, so there's no debate. <laughs> just get that one out the way. Just put it up there. Just no debate. Right. Just leave it there, <laughs> right there. There's, it's get it over with. It's the easiest one to rank. Just put it up there. No debate. It just sits up there because not only is it one of the best Marvel movies, one of the greatest superhero movies of all time. It just, just leave it there. Just leave yeah. it there. Don't even discuss it. Just get it up. There. I think yeah, I think you have to <laughs> I think you have to put it on S tier. If for no other reason because it's a it's the one of the greatest proof of concept superhero movies ever. It, the proof that you can do an ensemble piece that you can build up to an ensemble piece and that you can take main characters and make them all work together as a team. Uh and it's I mean it's one of the most iconic movies ever. Like, uh, it just it's copied and and you know homaged all the time. So you're right, S tier straight up. Um, by the same token, if we're gonna say it, we're gonna go with S tiers, we're gonna I want to throw in the D tier, the D tier movie. Yeah, and I think you know the one that I'm <laughs> that I'm gonna say, right? Yeah. Or do. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I hate to do it because in retrospect it's not I still like it. That's not a thing. I like all of these movies, but I think Thor the Dark World's got to go D tier. Like with It's one of those it's one of those movies that I I watched and it never really liked captive It was like I said it's not a bad movie. I liked it. It just never got me. Like it never like like and I never felt like when I was watching the movie that I was just like, oh man, this is look what's what look what's happening. I never felt that watching that movie. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's <clears throat> it's a movie that squandered a lot of potential. There's, yeah. I mean, and here's the thing: this is a, actually a movie that's been rehabilitated by Disney Plus. Like, there's there's a lot of references to the Dark World and uh, you know, Endgame has a, a significant part uh but there's also uh loki references so there's it's been rehabilitated but it's in on its own it squanders a lot of potential you know there's yeah. a lot of interesting things in there that just kind of get you know they they don't get used well and then there's a final fight that's sort of like whatever <clears throat> you know it's a bit it's a big marvel finish fight and you just like okay why it really it makes you ask the question what the fuck were the avengers like like yeah. <laughs> that's the real because question. this was in a, that <clears throat> speaking of avengers level threat yeah 
that was <laughs> one. And they were just like, eh, Tony Stark's getting a donut. <laughs> you know, uh, Captain yeah. America's just kind of chilling somewhere. So um, I do like the movie, but yeah, it it, it deserves to be down there. Um, I think I think the next D has to be there too. And that's Iron Man 2. <laughs> oh my God, absolutely. Iron um, Man 2 is the first movie that I regretted it. It was paying all that money that I watched it. I was just like, man. <laughs> like, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, no, it's, I feel you. That's <clears throat> what's weird about it is there's a lot of good in it. That's the thing is, yeah. like, there's a lot of good in, in Iron yeah, Man there's what, too. But there's one of the most of iconic the parts of all of Marvel is in that movie of Iron Man sitting in that donut, yeah. eating donuts. That's like an iconic scene, but it's so over like scenes like that and other parts of the movie are so overgrossed by this Russian guy who is whiplash freaking Rhodey being an absolute asshole to his best friend, stealing his technology and giving it to the military. And I'm just like, yeah. what is wrong with this? Like none of the movie made sense. The whole movie was just was did not make sense whatsoever. Yeah, I'm really. <clears throat> Yeah, no, I for it. no, I would say I would say that it was the saving grace of Iron Man 2 is that Robert Downey Jr. is just he's just such a uh, magnetic and charismatic Tony Stark that yeah. even in the midst of all of this there's a lot of foolishness in this movie by the way. There's a lot of foolishness yeah. in it, but you can still you're still with it because you like Tony Stark. Yeah, for yeah. some reason he I mean he's likable enough. And even though Whiplash has a lot of good motivation, he has good enough motivation, but it's not great motivation. Uh, but you just, at some point, you don't really believe that he can actually fight Iron Man. Like, it, there's there's some aspects of that movie where you're just like, I don't believe that this is actually a, a problem. Yeah. So it's it's unfortunate. But Iron Man 2, is not, it's not a terrible movie, but it's definitely not. You know, it's definitely one of the lower ones of the MCU. Um, well, sorry. Well, I guess it's my turn. Um, I, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to put up, you know, we're we're not going to do the big, the big Avengers ones yet. I'm going to put up, uh, Thor Ragnarok. Um, oh, this is, this one's tough. I'm going to, you know, we're going to start shuffling these soon too. This is, I'm going to, oh gosh, is it S tier? Oh gosh, that's hard. I think I, I, I say A tier. I, 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 I say I, it's, it's at the cusp. Of S tier because I love no, no, Thor I, Ragnarok. No, I, I, was I gonna say, love my personal preference is I think it's one of my favorite Thors, just possible. So I'm putting it in A for now, but we can we can shuffle it. But it's it's definitely it's uh, it's, it's so, so close to S. Like it's one of those movies that is like I enjoy. I'll watch it multiple times. But did it captivate? Like, see, when I think of S tier, I think of like something that absolutely captivated me from beginning to end. Thor Ragnarok was a great movie. I loved it, again, but it didn't like blow me out of my seat. Like right. some of the movies that I'm going to put, or we're going to say for uh, S tier. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. No, and no, I, I agree. It's, I think it's, it's pretty damn great. It's it's rewatchable. It does. I think I think it washed the entirely the taste of the dark world out of your mouth, and it was just yes. a, it was just a different look at Thor. It's very much you know Taika Waititi's uh, fingerprints are all over that movie in in the best possible way. So I I, I think I feel good about A tier right now. Um, See for my next one. I, I don't want to seem too homerish because it's one of my favorite movies of all time. But uh, I think Captain America, the first Avengers, a, is an A-tier movie. All right. Well, I, I'll, I'll put it there. I'm not sure if I agree with you, but <laughs> I mean, I'll put it there. I, I see part of me wants to put it at B because, you know what? It is a B. It's a B-tier movie. It's right. B because 
I loved, once again, another movie that I loved, but I won't put it at A because of its sequels. Just because of how good, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. the, how good the sequels were. But it was, if this list, if we started this list in 2012, it would be an A list movie. Right. You know what I mean? But because of the movies that came out later, because I just remember all the, I'm looking at the list again. Yeah, it's a B list movie. <laughs> I'm looking yeah. at the list. Yeah. It's a B list movie. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I put it, I put it there because <clears throat> I put it at B. It's and it, it makes it look worse than it is, but like it's, it's middle of the pack, only in this sense, only in the sense that it's as much as fun as an instrument, and it's, it's a character building movie and everything like that. There is some silliness to it, like towards the yeah. end of it. Uh, I think the Red Skull is just a little bit too over the top. And also yeah. there's some, there's a little bit of whitewashing, if you will, of, of the Nazis in a way yeah. that it makes the Hydra worse than the Nazis. And I'm like, you know what? Not really. So there's some of that. But on the other hand, <clears throat> Chris Evans is awesome. It just he's yeah. everything that I thought Captain America should be. There's some excellent writing of the character and i'd really like seeing peggy carter um uh in there and also uh you know sebastian stan as, as bucky <clears throat> so i i think middle of the pack is is about right i'd say um <clears throat> let me get one of the obvious ones out um this is our list so damn it we're gonna do this s tier black panther <clears throat> i will hear nothing against it i i I freaking love this movie. Mm -hmm. One of the best villains. You know how good you know how good Killmonger is as a villain. He's so fucking yeah. good that his variant is one of the best villains in the MCU. Like straight up, his variant Killmonger from What If is one of the best villains, and he's mm -hmm. based on again one of the best villains, one of the most sympathetic villains, and and understandable, <clears throat> and also. This movie just Chadwick Boseman. This is his his second outing as T'Challa, and this is the the one that Ryan Coogler got to write, and he is T'Challa. He, he to me he is the embodiment of it. You know, superior. Basically, this movie spawned two excellent variants: Superior Star Lord, right. And mm -hmm. uh, Killmonger, you know, like, I guess you could call him Superior Killmonger. <clears throat> but such a well-realized character, cast of characters, and a world. This It built literally a world that's more interesting than Atlantis and, and Aquaman. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. Like, I love this movie. But yeah, I completely agree with you about Black Panther. Black Panther is a great great movie like you just you basically took the words out of my mouth love black panther like i said one of my favorite marvel characters is in the movie and that's mubaku this uh -huh. still one of my favorite scenes Mepha! <laughs> <laughs> just, just which which love. by the way i've i've wondered to this day what is that what is he saying like i i, don't I do want to know i don't actually know what he's saying but <laughs> yeah that guy, i just that know guy. I enjoyed I enjoyed Black Panther. Black Panther's a good movie. It deserves to be up there where it's at. Great movie, great characters, great villains. Mm -hmm. Loved it. All right, so um but so your next one. So you said Captain America uh the Winter Soldier or Civil War. Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier, she going to put it at S tier. I'm going to put it as S tier because that movie Everything about it was good. The Corey, the, 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 it's, I still get sort of chills from that movie, from the beginning to the end. You know, Cap jumping into the water from the beginning of the movie, him fighting, him fighting that dude in the, uh, on the ship. It's just everything about that movie was just so good. His, 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 you know, Cap and um, really, really Chris Evans and Scarlett Johansson just synergy was just on point. Like, to, th there was not a low in that movie. Like, that movie was a freaking roller coaster from the beginning to the end. And just how smooth they made the Winter Soldier. I mean, everything that man did was smooth. Like, 
he had his the flunkies there were not there to help him. They were there just to give him guns. Like that <laughs> I, what I mean <laughs> when he when he ran out of a gun, they just gave him another gun. And I was just like, look at this, man. I mean, God, I love that movie. I loved the Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier is one of those movies that anytime I see it on, I watch it. Yeah. And enjoy it, myself watching it. I think yeah, there's <clears throat> the the writing is strong as hell there's because there's is more than just cap you know getting shot at and beating things up and and so forth it's more to it than that there's you know there is you know loss and then betrayal and then you know he's got a new fr- you know he's got a new friend because you know we see falcon so we see sam sh- shows up you know they're f- they're fighting the good fight against the you know bucky but tr- still trying to save him I mean, it's it's just a, uh, uh, you know, it's, a, it's like a spy movie, an action movie. There's all this stuff going on in it. And at the heart of it is really like a friendship that, that you know, is trying to be repaired somehow. And, you mm-hmm. know, there's a lot of, you know, trauma and all that going on. And plus there's some goofy ass shit in this, in that movie. And it works anyway. I mean, yeah. Arnim Zola is in there on, on a fucking dot matrix <laughs> so i mean like it works somehow it's I, it's it's such a it's really really a damn good movie and you're right you can sit and watch it at any time yeah um so i'm gonna go for i we don't have any c c tiers and i think it's time to throw something onto the c tier um <clears throat> i think that's i'm gonna go with incredible hope I want I, I want to put it on D, but I don't actually. I think it's unfairly mal, uh, uh, maligned uh, uh, for the for the movies because I think it's actually a lot better a movie than people give it credit for. It's just that there is the only Incredible Hulk movie. Um, it, the Hulk, if you think about it, it's a silly ass concept, and yet, uh, and we've had Hulk movies before this one. This is the first one that I thought finally figured out how to do a Hulk movie in a compelling manner. Um, yep. You had Edward Norton, I thought, was a really good Hulk. His, he, you know, they didn't go into it like, oh, how did he get his powers? He already has his powers, right? So really, he's just trying to deal with how to contain his powers, and then still having to, you know, be on the run from the from the army and everything like that. And plus, the army really wants to turn, you know, turn him into some kind of like prototype for advanced weapons. And so we get to see his, you know, his fight against against the army and then against and then the abomination is created and the, the thinker and all this stuff. it's it's actually in my mind it's a good movie. It just isn't like a, you know, a great movie. So that's that's why I kind of put it at the at the C tier. Yeah. So, the next movie I'm going to put is the OG. The original Iron Man. Right. Put it at A tier. A tier. Hey, yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll buy that one. This is the OG right here. Without Iron Man. And this is one of the reasons why people think Iron Man is a lot bigger in the comic book. In the, he, he's a lot bigger in the comic books than he actually is because of this movie. This movie started it all. You know, this was the first time that they proved that they can make a superhero movie that didn't begin with Spider, Bat, or Super and actually make a bunch of money off of it. But they still had to have man in it, though. <laughs> yeah, still had to have the word man. Yeah, you're right. Still had to have the word man. But this was the first time they could make. And honestly, this is the first time I watched the movie that the CGI literally threw blew me the fuck away. Like Iron Man suit looked real. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like the CGI is so good in this movie. What they put around Iron Man, it still looks good to this day. Yeah. You know, it it looked like Iron Man suit looked like it looked. I believed that this could be something that I can see in real life. Watching that Iron Man movie, it started it all. Great movie, you know. It deserves to be in the A tier, not an S tier movie. 
you know, but I enjoyed the movie. It's good. It did great by the character showing his beginnings. Love the part where it showed Tony, I mean, uh, Robert Downey Jr. with the hammer. Boom. Boom. Still one of my favorite scenes to this day. People, people still make memes of that. And it's, that movie came out 13 years ago. Yeah. And it deserves to be where it's at. You know, some people might say, well, if it's the OG, it's the one who started all, it should be S tier. Nah. Well, <laughs> nah, because the movies that came, the movies that are up there in the S tier thing are much better movies. A tier does this movie justice. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. No, I, th- I think you're on point there. Um, I think, uh, well, what was the one I wanted to look at? Wait, now we're starting to get into the thick of it. I think we're going to start to run into some disagreements here. Uh, I'm going to put Thor, Thor. I'm putting that B tier. I'm, I'm gonna tell you why. <clears throat> there are I love. I actually really love this movie. When it came out, I thought it was great. I thought Chris Hemsworth was great. I think it's a mm-hmm. great movie. I do not think it's S or A tier, uh, because there are there are some stylistic choices as far as the storytelling, and there's some real silliness. That not just uh, silliness is not the reason for it. It's really the silliness in the in the sense of is it a more compelling story for some of the the things that it does that are kind of like weird or silly, and I don't think it is necessarily a better movie for those things. Like like uh, you know the what is what's the thing called the Destroyer was kind of like it uh, was a bad guy that was a little underutilized. It's this movie was funny in ways, but like. It wasn't like, you know, a top tier funny uh, movie, but Hemsworth is just pretty great as as Thor. I think uh, the supporting cast is kind of like just a bunch of people just like, oh, well, we're scientists and things are happening. Okay, Uh, what do we do? And and Thor is just like, Mm -hmm. I guess I'll beat things up with a hammer for you. I can't, you know, but there is. The the story of him trying to try, kind of finding what it is to be a hero that's really what kind of redeems it. But I think it's a middle of the pack movie. Um, all so right. I think my next movie I'm gonna put is gonna be B tier. I think Avengers: Age of Ultron is a B tier movie. Do you? You know what? <laughs> this is just our this is our first disagreement. I think it's C tier. C tier. Yeah. Honestly, I'm not too far from C tier. Honestly, it's like I think it is a C tier movie. I agree with you. Now that I think about it, because what makes the movie, in my opinion, more tall, tar- like more palpable, and make it into a better movie is the stuff that came afterwards, where you can see Kevin Feige doing damage control for this movie, adding lore to this movie years after the movie's been out mm-hmm. with uh, uh, WandaVision. With WandaVision and other stuff pointing out that Ultron knew about Thanos all that time ago. No, he didn't. But there was a little, there was a little writing. I won't say it was a plot hole, but there was a little plot string that they can now connect to Thanos to make the movie better. They're just, that's how they fix the movie to make it more palpable for Avengers fans. Because now that you, now that I think about it, you're right. It is a secret tier movie because not what, it, it, I felt so underwhelmed watching that movie. Exactly. I never felt watching this movie that I felt like, I just, it, 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 what I, I was just waiting for. I was like, where is this badass moment that's going to make me get up out of my seat? It never happened. I just remained in my seat, and I never had a fanboy moment at all. Right. And that and that's very, very sad. And and honestly, it was that moment. I know you around this time when people were asking, "Are superhero movies getting old?" Because mm-hmm. that movie didn't do as well as they thought it would do. Right. It didn't get the fan reaction everybody wanted it from from it. But. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you're about to go to the new movie that came out literally I, next year. Yeah, and to see, this was what I was saying. I remember watching that movie. And I'm like, this is good. And then I went and saw this next one, and I was like, 
this should have been a damn Avengers movie. It literally is yes. an Avengers movie. And, and, <laughs> yes. you know, and I'm going to A tier with this. I don't think this is an S tier, but I think yeah. it's an A tier movie. And that's Captain America Civil War. What yes. a, oh, God dang it, that's an amazing movie. That movie yes. is so fun. It first it introduced my favorite MCU character, which is Black Panther. But mm-hmm. also, two of my other favorites, you know, going head to head. Bucky's in it. You know, he's at the center of it. The Avengers are fighting each other and Spider-Man shows up. How mm-hmm. literally everything you could possibly want in a Avengers movie is in Captain America Civil War. How is that not the Avengers 2? The Age of Ultron is C tier not just for everything you said, but because it said Age of Ultron and it was like Day of Ultron. Like there's some, there's some, sh- some things happening that are cool and we get to see Wanda and I, I get that, but it's not an age of Ultron. And it's one of, it's the one, it's the first time I think, and I hate to say this, this is the first time the MCU lied to me about what the movie was going to be about. That's not age of Ultron. Don't say that. Just say Avengers versus Ultron and move on. So I'm sorry. Civil War is awesome. I loved you know, seeing, you know, Scott Lang in there. There's, there's so much cool stuff that happens in that movie. And there's an actual real story that goes on. And the rift between Captain America and Iron Man is real. And I get it. And it may, and it pays off. That rift pays off later on in, in the series. So definitely A tier. Yep. No, we're getting to the nitty gritty now. We're, <laughs> we only yeah. got <laughs> So the next movie I'm going to pick, I'm I'm leaving the the more big time movies. I'm gonna get Ant Man, and I'm gonna put Ant Man. Oof, that's a tough one. I know, I know what I want. I wish, I wish there was a B plus tier. Yeah, <laughs> so you wanted a B tier, okay? I put it's like I agree with you, by the way. But it's like it's a really good B movie. It was a really good movie. I loved Ant Man. Oh, I had a blast watching Ant Man. Funny movie. Just love seeing Ti. Oh man, it was a blast watching Ant Man. Had a blast in it. But it's. I feel like I'm gonna keep it at B tier movie because it's one of those movies that you technically don't have to watch to truly get into Avengers. I disagree with what I'm saying, but there's a lot of people I know that have never watched Ant-Man, but know everything that's going on in the Avengers movie. And I'm just like, I need to watch Ant-Man. They're like, eh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come no, on. And it, they like, yeah, you get, you get everything you need later on in the Avengers, but still, I know I agree with you. Ant-Man's really great. It's, it is under, it underperformed. But it, I mean, it made its money, but it underperformed. But I think it's a much better movie than people give it credit for. And I agree, mm-hmm. B tier definitely. Um, let's just get this one out of the way. Iron Man three C tier. Uh, I like the again. I like the movie. Uh, it, in in my mind, it did some good things with you know bringing Tony back to the basics. But the villain, the lame ass villain, was is yeah, what, is what kills it. <laughs> The man, the the man, the fake ass Mandarin, and then you know, the, the extremists yeah. and all that. It it underutilized extremists and it underutilized the man, uh, the Mandarin, and it basically fails in that, uh, on that uh, thing. Which isn't to say it's a bad movie. I like it again, but it it just doesn't do well by the by the villains. Yep, it does not. All right, so again, we're getting down to the nitty gritty. So. <laughs> What's your, what's your next one? Doc Strange. Ooh, oh, I, I have a feeling we're going to have some disagreement about this one, but go ahead. <laughs> God dang. I know where I want it. <laughs> I think I need, I think it's an A tier movie. They, okay, you know what? We're on the same page here. I, I think it's a, it's Strange. <laughs> I, I think it's an A tier movie. It's Doctor Strange is one of those like very underrated movies that I've absolutely had a blast watching. 
Oh man, it it's one of those movies that I feel like a lot of people don't like they they really just just don't take it seriously, but it was a great movie. I enjoyed it from beginning to end. I loved the little story of Doc being a a dick of a, a surgeon and he loses the ability of doing what he was known best for and he becomes this uh, um sorcerer and then i just love the little name drops like they said this is the the staff of the living tribunal donnie <laughs> <laughs> it's just like what you just have this just lying around and you know his his interaction with the um the levitating cape uh yeah, the cloak um, of levitation. the cloak of levitation it just everything then just the, of course the ending dormammu I've come to bargain and just <laughs> the, the montage of him getting absolutely disintegrated by Dormammu and he and I know he feels it <laughs> right yeah it's, oh it was a great yeah great it's, movie. it's a great movie there are some some choices that they make in the movie that are kind of questionable but just generally speaking it was I, I really like the movie so I agree with you a tier absolutely mm -hmm. um Oh God! There's a. Uh, I'm gonna go for low hanging fruit on this one. Uh, Guardians two. I'm gonna say C tier. It's it's only C. Yeah. It's C tier. Again, I like the movie, uh, but I wasn't wowed by it. I liked the movie quite a bit. There's. I think Ego was not as cool of a villain as I wanted him to be, and there seemed to be a lot of retreading of stuff we had seen in the first Ga uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. It also had one of the funniest moments I've ever seen in the MCU period, which was Drax talking about that he moves so slowly it's like he's invisible. I laugh my ass off on, <laughs> on that one. It's there's it's a uh, if you like the first one, this is more of that, but it's it's just not doesn't hit quite the same as the first Guardians. So that's why I want to put it on C tier. All right, where to? <laughs> which one? Which are you, we're, we're down to seven now. Which one do you want? <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy. Let's go to Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay. A tier, A tier movie. Okay. Uh, it's yeah. I I, I, it, I think it's B plus, but yes. B plus. Yeah, but I mean, I'll go with A. A's fine. A's fine to me. I feel like it's bottom A tier because. It was the first time that, you know, Marvel went outside of the box and started doing Galactus stuff, and it it hit it out the park. It's it's right where it needs to be at the bottom of A tier uh -huh. and right where it needs to be. Loved the movie. The wackiness, the humor. Oh, loved it. And I, I feel like if there was an A minus area, it'll be there. But a tier, I think, is is a gr bottom A tier, is where the movie should be. Right, agreed. I mean, like I said, if there was a B plus, I'd put it there. It's it does have it has a lot of it. it it's a movie that had a lot of personality that isn't the same as the rest of the MCU, in my opinion. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's I I really like that movie. It's really 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 good. Ooh, now it's okay. Now we're starting to get to. Choosing my choosing from my, my babies. Uh, I'll do Ant Man and Wasp. Um, oh gosh. Well, this is a hard one. I want to say B tier, but I don't think that's true. <laughs> There's it's a bit of a letdown to be honest from the first Ant Man. I don't, but it's hard for me to call it C tier. Also, uh, mm -hmm. mm, I'll put it on C tier. But for one reason, it's because the, uh, uh, it had two villains and neither of them were like particularly compelling. Um, <clears throat> the ghost should have been cooler. Don't. Ghost should have been cooler than she was. Yeah. I'd understand her reason, but um, and also the uh, I guess the the guy trying to steal the Ant Man technology. I mean, I never believed there was any real danger. The most dangerous that Scott was in in the whole thing was getting arrested for for a per, you know parole violation. 
that's what you know yeah that to me so the a non-compelling villain is what kind of puts it down there for me like again i really like the movie though so now we're we're into it now <laughs> i go for captain marvel that's the easiest one out of yes yeah. captain marvel <laughs> i think it's a b i'll 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 agree with that i again yeah. That's just just weird. I keep putting asterisks by this. I loved Captain Marvel. I yeah, the thing I, is, is I didn't love it the first time I watched it. I liked it, but after yeah. seeing it again, I loved it. Yeah, it was it's it's one of those movies that it was just like I had a good time watching it. Had good nostalgia moments of the internet and blockbuster, and oh man, it was a good movie. I liked it. Black. They should. I'm excited to see what they do with the with the sequel, but this is where it should be. It's a B tier movie. Yeah, you know? I mean it's it's there with Captain America, so that's I mean it's in good yeah. company. Um, let's go with uh sp- okay. I'm gonna do Spider Man Homecoming. I don't think you're gonna agree with me on this one. This is just my personal preference. Um, I think it's an S S tier movie, and there's there. There's reasoning for it. He is the most Peter Parker I've ever seen on a, in a Spider-Man. Tom Holland is the most Peter Parker. And the way he's, and it's not just that, you know, the way he's dealing with all of, uh, you know, being wanting to be a superhero and just like not being able to get to the big leagues. And then all of these, you know, having, he's, you know, he's a teenager and he's having to fight threats where the grownups don't think that he's like, you know, ready and they don't take him seriously and all this other stuff. And then he really shows the Peter Parker luck, but also his grit. And I, I mean, mm-hmm. the, the very ending where, I mean, the vulture is way more of a threat than you ever think he should be in, in the comics. And that ending is just like, it's just kind of amazing. So I think it's S tier. I'm willing to listen to you say that it's not. I will say the movie is, uh, I'll put it in A tier. And the only reason why I put it in A tier because when I watched the movie, I, I didn't feel what I felt like with the movies that are in S tier. Oh, and I got to move them down. <laughs> I, it's an A tier movie for me, but it's like it's a high A tier. It was a good movie for me, but it wasn't like I didn't feel the 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 grandeur of what like, I felt with Avengers and Black Panther and Winter Soldier of like oh my goodness, this is a spec. You know, I'm having well, a blast watching this let, movie. Let, let me yeah. let me offer let me offer something to, uh, for consideration. Do you remember the feeling you had? When you when you're like, yeah, Pete's gonna get to go. Uh, he's gonna go to homecoming with, uh, you know, with his the girl that he, uh, which is Liz, uh, what's her name, uh, Liz Allen, right? Mm-hmm. It's like he, and then he goes and knocks on the door in his tux. Yeah. And Vulture opens the door, and I was like, I mean, think about the feeling you had, because I was like, holy shit! Like when that all happened, right? We've we yeah. up to this point, they don't know each other. And then they do. And then there's that scene in the car where he's threatening Peter. And I was like, man, come on. Like, that's that's huge. That's a that's a gigantic scene within the MCU, period. And that's that's why that's stuff like that happens in this in this. uh, It happens in in this movie, the whole bit where Ned finds out that he's, you know, he's Spider-Man. And they're just kind of like, yeah, well, you know, what can you do? You know, what's what's your powers and all that other stuff. And then the scenes with Iron Man, when Iron Man's just like kind of giving him the business for kind of fucking up with the fairy. There's just there's a lot of that stuff going on within there. And like I said, it's the most Peter Parker I've ever seen on screen. And that's that's why I, I put it up on on S tier because I love Sp- Spider Man. He's my second favorite. Uh, superhero he used to be my favorite superhero for a long time. He's my second favorite superhero, and I'm well acquainted with him. And I felt like this was a translation of him onto screen, like almost perfectly. So, but I'll keep it in A because I, <laughs> I'll keep it in A. I still think it's S tier though. Um, okay. 
Uh, this might be for my next one. This might. This might. This might be a little spicy. I'm gonna put Endgame as an A tier movie. How dare you? <laughs> no, I, no, actually, I, 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 I'm, I'll go with you on that. Well, that's uh, Infinity War. Oh, sorry, I got the wrong one. Oops. Yeah. Endgame. There we go. <laughs> I feel like Endgame suffers from one thing and one problem only. And we would have been a tier. There's a there's like forty five minutes of that movie. I feel like they could have either removed or used for something else, and <laughs> that is what sort of removes it from S tier. Because I'm not it. There was parts of the movie where I'm sitting in the theater going like, "Man, when is something about to happen?" But when it happens, holy shit. Uh-huh. But let's be honest. Nothing happens in this movie for a good minute. It was, and I understand why they did it, but I felt like it could have used that time for other things. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, there's, <clears throat> the thing is that there's a lot of setup in this yeah. movie. It's, it's essential. it is really, it's not a continuation of a, of, Infinity War, it is, in in my mind, it's another movie that has to like lay groundwork like any other movie. But there's it's because the ending is almost literally a half hour of ass kicking. They've got to give you two and a half hours of explaining how you get to that ass kicking. And yeah, I mean they introduce time travel and multi dimensions. And they've got to go do a time heist. And there's so much going on in that in the movie that it has to be that long. Because if you think about what, if, like, if you really go through and like, what can you cut out and still make this all make sense? I mean, I guess you could cut out the time heist just be like we came back, but then things happen, you know. So yeah, and especially because this was a send off for a couple of of characters, you had to like take the time with them because these were going to be the last hours we ever saw you know, Iron Man or Captain America in the MCU. So mm-hmm. I, I get it. But I, no, I'll, I'll, I'll go with you on that one. A, uh, Avengers in the game is really great. So uh, that's fine. <clears throat> uh, far from home. I'm going to do that one because I think I know where Infinity War is going to go. Ooh, far from home. This is a tough one. Um, I'm going to go B. It'll be tier on that one. Yeah, I completely it, agree. It's it just there was a, something about the movie that didn't, and I was feeling this when I was in the theater sitting and watching the movie. I was like, "This is not quite hitting me. It's not quite pulling me." And it wasn't until the very end. There's a lot of fun, interesting stuff, a lot of character development I really liked in there. Things that happened that I wanted to happen, but there was, and and also the kind of the switcheroo that Mysterio did, the final fight. It's all there's a lot of really awesome things happening in it, but it's not quite as compelling as homecoming in, in my opinion. And that's not, that's no strike against it. B tier on this list is a still a, a really great movie. It's just not, it's not quite as compelling uh, as, as the A and S tier. So uh, the final one, oof, where, where are you putting it? I know where I want it to be. S tier. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's a hysteria movie. It's what, you know, on its own, on its own to me, this, this movie did everything, like I said, that you wanted to see in a movie. Uh, a comic book nerd wants to see in a movie. Multiple characters coming together to fight one big existential threat that is actually serious and actually can kill everybody. And it's all that and then some. And also, it's, you know, this movie manages to do two things. It manages to do all of that, but it also, it, it manages to be a follow-up to Black Panther and to Thor mm-hmm. Ragnarok. You know, it's, I mean, it's, it's it does it so well, and Thor is well featured in there. And then it, it's telling three different stories, too. Like, it's, it's really telling four different stories. It's telling thanos's story plus what thor is doing plus what you know 
Spider Man and Iron Man are and and Doctor Strange are doing, you know, plus what you know the Wakandans and and Captain America and all them are doing on Earth too. Um, it's it's really like it's it's a, just an amazing bit of storytelling. Yeah. So, I completely agree. Yeah, it's just um, it's all around good. So this is look, this is a big list of good movies for, that range from good, you know, all the way down there at Thor: The Dark World, to excellent, you know, all the way up to Avengers and and Infinity War. And um, I'm sure if if there was more, if we we had more time, we could probably drill down a little more and maybe fine tune it but i like this list i think this is this is true and every other tier list is wrong so <laughs> <laughs> i think we can agree on that so yeah. that's this is fun nerd talk this is what we do we we sit and we categorize and classify and just generally speaking uh have our little have our little discussion so this was fun uh we're going to do this again uh sometime so we'll we'll do it for the dcu it'll probably take about 10 minutes so <laughs> um anyway what, <laughs> uh, what did you guys uh think about this tier list and maybe maybe probably you have a different tier list why don't y'all uh get down to the comments let us know uh what you think about all of this and maybe share your tier list or, or you can hit us up uh on twitter at super not funny s1 or super not funny show at gmail.com. You know, we appreciate uh, if y'all do that. And while you're in the mood to interact, get down there and hit that subscribe button. Join the Super Not Funny Show family. Or uh, you can all, um, or also you can hit that notification bell and it'll let you know when we do new content. Uh, we're doing mm-hmm. this. Uh, we do uh, you know reviews and we do, of course, uh, the Gamer Cast and uh, this podcast. And of course, this podcast doesn't work if it's just me. Uh, I have the help of my good friend Lottie uh, with this show. So, Lottie, where can they reach you on social media? You can always find me at my uh, Instagram, which is Anukinihun. It is A N U K I N I H U N. Again, it's A N U K I N I H U N. Constantly upload videos, pictures. Just recently uploaded a picture of myself as a video game character so you can check how that looks and also you can find me on my youtube channel which is kenny hoon 25 was rocking it last month with uh doing uh streams of um horror games kind of taking a little bit of a break from live streaming but i'm about to get back on it soon so guys make sure you 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 go out there watch that and you know, get uh, send a like, send a comment. You know, subscribe. Yep, you guys go over there and uh, show some love to Lottie. Uh, do all that for good stuff. So, all right. Well, that's been episode twenty-five of the Supercast, and uh, you guys come back next week. We are gonna do the Eternals. Yes, uh, this week didn't quite work out because uh, real life got in the way of actually going to see Eternals. So. Next week, it's all about Eternals and, of course, all of the other news that come uh, come about superheroes uh, in the pop culture space. Well, until then, I have been Mo Fay, your resident fabricant and comic extraordinaire on all things pop culture, joined by the anime expert, video game designer, and, of course, lover of all things superhero, my good friend Lottie. And we'll see you guys on the other side of the thread. Peace. Peace.